When you come from Cuba, uh, you are presumed to be for fleeing political persecution. So you automatically are eligible for uh, refugee cash, you're eligible for food stamps, you're eligible for Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, others who immigrate to this country have to wait five years for those and don't get the refugee cash. But within a year, depending if you're paroled, you can apply for a green card. And then you can travel back to Cuba as often as you want. Multiple times, you can take cash. You can buy stuff with the food stamps. I've seen it, okay, this is not, I didn't read this in a magazine, I've seen it. They use the food stamps, they fill up these bags and they take it back to Cuba over there or they just transfer cash back. Some people go back to Cuba for three months at a time. They've been here a year. How, if you are fleeing persecution, how can it be that a year later you are spending summers in Cuba? How can it be that less than a year later you're traveling back say, six, eight times a year to Cuba? I've never heard of people fleeing persecution going back to a place repeatedly. There's, there's an issue here, is there not? We do indeed remove individuals uh, to Cuba. So, um, Assuming and, Cuba and will you, accept them and they're ineligible for some reason. That's, right? That is correct. But the overwhelming majority do not get removed. That, that is. Which is fine. I'm just saying, if one, if once you, I'm not talking about the people that are here. Once you are here, you're assumed here because you're a refugee fleeing persecution and you have a host of benefits at a minimum. If a year later you're here on a refugee but you're going back to Cuba six times, shouldn't you at least use, lose the refugee status? Senator, let, let, me, um, um, let me follow up with your, your concern. The question being, if I understand it correctly, is if indeed an individual flees the country of origin by reason of fear of persecution, does their um, desire and actually travel to the country of origin militate against the legitimacy of their claim? Thank, thank you. It's a year later. Sen yes. Senator Baldwin. I will follow up on that, Senator. Talked to a lady three days ago. She says her son, I, I forgot the exact, she, he may be in Honduras. She's going to Venmo him five, $6,000 or cash app. He's going to pay someone to bring him to the US border where he will present himself to border officials. He will be admitted into the country at some point, released. Uh, he knows this because other people have done it. Uh, depending on how he's released, within 180 days, I believe, he'll have a work permit. And uh, at some point in the future, he'll have to show up for a hearing, uh, maybe not get an immediate trial date, but he's basically within the next eight weeks is gonna be living in the United States. This is the pattern that they have established and that they understand. And once he's successful at doing that, he'll obviously tell people back home how he did it and they'll do the same thing. Is that not in essence what is happening? Our model is to build safe, orderly and lawful pathways to come to the United States and um, seek relief under our laws and to deliver a consequence for those individuals who do not avail themselves of those lawful pathways, but instead follow the pattern that you have described. But as of and right now, the pattern I've described is the prevalent one. That is one pattern, but the policy that we have promulgated, the model that we have architected, is in fact a significant defense against that in the context of a broken immigration system, and our policy is a working model the model is an optimal model that we are continuing to pursue during- I understand, I don't mean I to cut you off. I got your point, I only have a minute left. I wanna to get to one more question. My point on that though is the perception is as important as the reality. The perception right now still is. I mean, this lady told me this on Monday, so this is 